Want to see how I make a double front step pop-up card? Come on in! Hello, welcome to Senior Susie Stamps. This is Julia Laird and today I wanted to show you how I made this card. It is a double front step pop-up card and I originally found the design for this over at Iced Images YouTube channel and she made hers in a uh, five by seven format. This is a four and a quarter card format and I wanted to show you how I made it today. You are going to need several things but the first thing you'll need is a piece of good card stock. Your first cut is going to be to cut off this four and a quarter by eight and a half inch card base. These are the factory corners and I marked those so that these two pieces will have a factory corner on them and you can use your factory side, your factory cut side uh, to cut against and I'll show you that in just a second when we start cutting. But your second cut will come right across here and then you'll cut off this little piece of scrap and then you go to this bigger piece and cut this piece off and then cut this little scrap off so you'll have this piece, this piece, and this piece. Okay, today I'm going to use my Tim Holtz cutter and this is 100 pound 271 GSM cardstock and that's what I'm going to cut today. So remember, we cut the four and a quarter inch side off first. Let me mark my two little factory corners here just so I can remember. <laughs> now I want to cut this one at three and a quarter inches. So that's going to be cut number two. And then I want to cut this piece at five and one quarter inches. Okay, Whew, that's noisy and I apologize for that. So that's that piece and this piece. Now I'm going to do this other piece. So I want to cut that at two and a quarter. All I've done it to modify this into this size is take an inch off the card size for each layer and then I added my score uh, size back in. So this one is two and a quarter by four and a quarter and I have this little scrap left. So we've got all our cutting done. It didn't take but just a second and I can put my trimmer away now. The mechanics of this card require some scoring and these are the directions cut the cardstock which we just did and I'm going to score the base card at four and a quarter to make a four and a quarter inch square card so that's the first step now this is a little tool that I got at the Dollar Tree which is a good thing I did because I can't find my little score thing <laughs> you know how it is in your studio sometimes you just lose stuff uh, temporarily, I hope, <laughs> and it didn't go in the trash can. So there's that score line at four and a quarter. I'm going to fold it, bump in, and I'm going to use my Teflon bone folder to put a good crease on that. And there's step one. Now on the first layer, Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, these directions will all be over on the Facebook page or you can do a little snapshot of it if you want to here. It's the first layer here. I want to score it. This is the one you know that is three and a quarter by five and a quarter. I want to start my score at that on this one at three and a quarter. And I'm going to score every half inch. So that's three and a quarter three and three quarters four and one quarter and four and three quarters there and that's the scoring on that piece I'm going to score the other layer as well and we're going to do basically the same thing 
I'm going to score that half inch off. So I'm going to start this one at two and a quarter and add a half inch for each score line because I'm making these little pop-ups only a half inch deep. That's three and a quarter and three and three quarters. There we go. So those are all done and that should be all I need the scoreboard for today. Now I'm going to bring my Tim Holtz trimmer back in and on these two corners here I hope you can see but this is the this is the side that's scored and I'm going to trim off just the tiniest little bit off of this end. Not much at all. You could do this with a pair of scissors and that would be fine. It's not critical. I just need to trim off just a little small, small sliver. And I want to do that off of both of these on the, that final score line. Doesn't take much at all. Just a little sliver. Now before I get too much further into this, I want to erase my little corner markings. Some people will put this together with red tape or Suquang. I, I have found that Art Glitter Glue works just fine. What you're going to do now is to, to fit, fold up all of these uh, little score lines because it's going to make the square for the pop-up. So when it's all said and done, this is where it's going to go in here like this. Okay? I like to do mine bump in. And I also like to burnish every single score line on these because you will need them to be working really well for you. So I'm going to do that now. I like to use this side here of my Teflon bone folder. It just seems to give a little bit more even pressure for me. Now, before we glue these together, I want to put my layers together and put them on. And get this out of the way. On the base card, which is this four and a quarter inch square, you'll need a matte layer at four by four. And I've already got mine cut and ready to go here. So there's my matte layer. And I'll need a pattern layer that's three and three quarters. On the first layer, I need a matte layer that's three by three. And on this one, you'll notice this is not actually three by three. It's one and a half plus one and a half by three. But you won't notice that once you get your second layer on there. We're going to put a little piece of ribbon on that. The pattern layer will be two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And then on the second layer, I just decided not to put a mat on that. I'm only going with one layer because I made a little flower embellishment to go on that, and I think that's going to be enough. So let's start uh, putting, oh, and this is a little piece of trim that I had left over. I'm going to put this on the inside of that card. Let me show you what I've used today. I've used, out of the Hello Friend, the Friendly Hello Celebration stamp set, I used this leaf pattern, and I'm also going to use Hope You Have a, the Best Birthday sentiment on the inside of this because it is going to be a, a, a birthday card for me. The paper that I'm using came out of this Paper Studio pack. It's Distressed Florals. And it's really pretty and it doesn't matter you can choose whatever you want to out of a paper pack like this it's kind of overall general enough that it's not going to create any issues for you at all now i did use gray flannel for the leaves on this piece and i used pool party and gray flannel on my happy birthday sentiment and all I did was to drag the pool party and then the gray flannel across here and make kind of a little um, faux wood if you will. Now you'll notice that I have edged the 
outlines of all of these and I just used an alcohol marker in kind of a medium gray color to do that and this is the um, happy birthday stamp that I used over here it's an old Stampin' Up um, stamp that's been available for a long long time you probably have it in your stash <laughs> but if you don't have any of these things um, use what you got because that's the beauty of this card. You can do all kinds of things. I think I'm going to put a black ribbon on this one. Now on the original card here, I split this piece as well and I covered it with a little pink ribbon. Today we're going to do black. I'm going to start by gluing up my layers. Now when I do the pop-up part, I am going to use Art Glitter Glue because as I said, I find that to hold adequately for me and my purposes. I think this little gray border around uh, this piece adds just a little bit of dimension to that. And it's gonna go on the front of the card. So let's get that put on. I'm gonna put a little extra ATG on that because there may be a little bit of pull on this. And I didn't get that quite square, did I? Let's see if I can pull this back off. If you're careful, sometimes when you don't get something on quite right, lots of times you can retry it again. And I, I have to do this every once in a while. Especially when I'm doing a video, I get a little nervous sometimes. <laughs> oh well. Okay, that's much better. Now if I can get it pulled up off of the mat. This is a new mat for me. Um, it is a um, We Are Memories Keeper magnetic mat. And I'm doing some um, work with it to use it for a while first. And then I'll do a little product review. But so far, I really like this mat. So... I'll get this on the card and I want to go ahead and put my layers onto these other sections as well. It just makes it a little easier to do it while they're sort of flat than if you have them have the pop up. Oh, I need to put a little ribbon on that. Almost forgot. And I'm going to use a little bit of um, cellophane tape with that. And that's what I did on the back of this sheet as well. I just taped this together. It works well enough for what we're doing here. And you won't ever see that seam again. And this is just going to hold it while I'm putting ATG tape on it. And then I'll go ahead and tie my bow later when we get to finishing the card and getting it embellished. Okay. So I'm going to flatten that back out and put this up in the middle of that section with an even border around it. And then put my top layer on. You can mix and match these layers like I have. And as long as you get kind of a corresponding color uh, family in there, they really, I think, add to the beauty of the piece. Now I'm going to put this little piece on here. And this is the size of the mat, which is two by two. And it's the only layer I'm going to put on this section here. Now, let me show you how to glue these up. We're going to put glue on this very outside piece. And don't be shy with your glue. But you don't want to overdo it if that makes any sense. And then, once you have it glued up, you fold up two sections, all right, like that, and then you fold the back, the top, back over top of it, 
and that puts it in exactly the right place right like that the reason that we trimmed off this little bit right here is because of that score roll let me see if i can get it up there and show you that little score roll if you didn't trim that off it would shove this section up just a little bit but by trimming that off you get a nice good square going here and we're going to do the same with this one so on the what we'll call the front side here i put my glue and then i'm going to fold two sections like this and then you fold the top right back over over it and that puts it in exactly the right spot for you and there we are how easy that is and then i'll kind of like to go ahead and give that a nice little burnish down again going both ways because this is a working mechanism on these cards and they do have to fold up in order to be put in the mail now on this one then so this is the side that's glued up to the front and we're going to put glue on this side here that makes sense we're going to do the same thing glue it up well but don't over overdo it and go off of your quadrant that you want there this time i'm holding it like this i'm going to bring my card over and i'm going to set this right on the very edge centered i'm using my grid lines on my magnetic sheet here to help me center that all right so that's the first layer and that's what it looks like when it's done and if you do it right it'll sit right like that i like to pull it down like this and press it in really well and fold it up and press it in really well and you can see now when these fold up you've got lots of room to decorate that we're not going to fill that up today but if you wanted to you certainly could now on this top layer again we're going to go directly opposite that one that we've already glued these cards don't take very long at all to make and they really you get a little, lot of bang for your buck with these now i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to drag this down so i'm just working off of that one front and that's the first layer front and i'm going to put this other little second layer on right down there next to the edge see how that goes i'm using my little grid lines here to help me and then i'm going to fold it and press it well and now it's just a matter of embellishing the card i have a little section here to go on the inside it's one half inch by four inches well, it's just a little scrap that i had that was in that paper pack and i'm going to put that in here and then i'll finish this up with a sentiment inside but for right now i just want to finish the outside of the card and get it done so you can see what it looks like i'm going to put a few little extra leaves on here now when you're adding things here's the trick when you've got it folded up you don't want it to extend up into here because you won't be able to get it in your envelope so you want to keep your mind's eye on where you're going to put these things and i'm going to stick that right down there oops come back here give myself plenty of room and press it down and i'm going to put another one up there with it i didn't need to glue those top leaves in there now i have this sweet little flower that i made and i'm going to put some glue on that i 
and press it down and let it dry. I couldn't decide on my happy birthday if I wanted to put a little wiggly squiggly on the top of it or not. So that's the next decision that I have to make. And that looks pretty good. And I'm thinking that I might like to do that, just kind of soften it a little bit. So I'll add just a little bit of glue and then I can center this and trim off the tail. That just adds a little bit more to this piece. There. Now, there. I think I will go ahead and put this up on some double foam tape. Hey, did y'all notice I'm standing today? This is my standing desk. <laughs> I've had a long week this week, I'll tell you what. And I'm thrilled to be able to make this video for you. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get this done this week. So I hope you're as pleased with it as I am. I really like these little cards. They're very cute. And I hope that comes through in the video. So I'm going to put this on that, that uh, back layer. Kind of angle it a little bit, I think. Now I'm going to get my 10 second bow maker out. If you all don't have one of these, I can strongly suggest you get one. I have several of these around the studio and I've given several of them away. Everyone that I know that uses one of these absolutely loves it. So, and you can tie a little quick bow. I have arthritis in my hands and sometimes my bow making is absolutely pitiful. I don't mean a little bit pitiful. I mean absolutely pitiful. So um, this has really saved my little small bow making life, let me tell you. <laughs> now I am going to use a little glue dot to put that on with. These glue dots were the best invention, weren't they? I'll tell you, they make my life easy on these little kinds of things. I'm just going to put this in there. Right like that. I think I might add a, a few little embellishments um, on here. I remembered I had some of these Nouveau Drop um, enamel dots that I had made. And I think that color right there is going to be really pretty with these. So let's try them and see. I like that color of blue. Oh yeah, I think that's going to be plenty, don't you? One thing I forgot to mention was this is the size envelope that um, I use for these cards. They are square envelopes, four and a half by four and a half. This just happens to be the brand that I find frequently and I get them from Amazon. But you can tell how nicely these little cards fold up. And I slip right down in there and ready to go. Here's a close up of these cards. So I hope you've enjoyed it today and that you'll come back soon. Please subscribe and comment if you want to. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.